Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachak Wadash. Double honors as always to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear for bear. And in sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of the sincere elders and Akim of Great Millstone, who teach the likewise doctrine of truth and sincerity, as well as the Akim on down that teach the likewise doctrine of truth and sincerity, and the sincere uh, men that are believers within the congregation of the nation of Israel, the speckled bird Hebrews are like foreigners scattered among the heathen that are like the heathen, and the sincere Aquathium of the nation of Israel, which is to say, the sincere sisters of the nation of Israel listen in silence and meekness, as the scriptures command to do so. And this is going to be another Shabbat day reading, and in this Shabbat day reading, I'm going to get into... <laughs> The first of the uh, two greatest commandments in the law, which is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. OK, and right here, as you can see on the screen. OK, we have the image we have right here. We have the true, holy and powerful, mighty name of the heavenly father, the ancient of days, uh, who the world in the West refers to as God almighty. OK. His proper name is Yahweh in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, the Lashua and Kodash, the Ibarioth, which is read from right to left. So we have the Yah, as you can see right here, the Yah, the Ha, the Wa, and the Ha. The Wa and the Ha connect, so it's pronounced Yahweh, which means he is. Okay, he exists. He's the Ancient of Days. He has no beginning. He has no end. All right. That's the true, holy, and powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father. Whom the world ignorantly calls God and these other names that I won't mention right here to the best of my ability since it's the Shabbat day. <clears throat> All right. And this is the name of his only begotten son who sits on his right hand. OK. Which is also in the Lashwan Kodash, the Paleo Hebrew, which they which the world calls the Phoenician. OK. So we have the Yah, the Ha, the Wa, the Shah and the I and the Shah and the I connect at the end. So it's Yahweh Shai which means he saves, he delivers, which is the name that the archangel Gabriel told his parents, his earthly parents, Joseph and Mary, to give him once he was conceived. All right. Which is why it says that in Matthew, the first chapter, around about the 20th to the 21st verse, that he will save his people from his sins. You shall call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from his sins. And his people is the nation of Israel, the true biblical Hebrew Israelites which today, due to the scattering and the curses written up in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, starting at the 15th verse, they are referred to by the bywords of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, okay? And for our speckled bird, Hebrews like foreigner brothers and sisters that look like the nations of which they've been scattered to, they go by the, uh, the denonyms of those nations as well, okay? Now, these are the true, holy, and powerful, mighty names that you need to call on to receive salvation. Okay, so you pray to Yahweh, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father, true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham, which is the Hebrew way of saying in the name of Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son. And as it's written, no man cometh unto the Father but by him, as is written in the book of St. John, chapter 14, verse 6. Okay, and a few other places in the scriptures. Now, right here at the bottom, we also have the Paleo-Hebrew script, okay? For those that are wondering how to pronounce uh, these holy, powerful, mighty Hebrew names, we have this Paleo-Hebrew script at the bottom, and our elders and apostles of Great Millstone, they also do many lessons on the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. And, you know, it's best to pray in the Hebrew as often as you can, because the scriptures tell you in the prologue to Sirach, the book of Sirach, better known as Ecclesiasticus, in the Apocrypha, the same things uttered in Hebrew have not the same force when they're uttered in another language, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, so, you know, it's not to say the Lord won't hear your prayers if you pray it in the English or, or the Spanish or whatever language we've been, um, whatever language you grew up speaking due to the scattering. But once you know better, you got to do better. All right. And if you really want these prayers heard, that's another reason why you see brothers, they, uh, they study the Lashua and Kodash so they can teach the flock and edify the flock to better rehearse the righteous acts and to send up more powerful prayers, okay? Now, let me get to the uh, 
we get to it. The first precept that I always start this uh, Shabbat day reading off with is the book of Acts, chapter 13. And I'm going to start at verse 13. And it reads, Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Shabbat day and sat down. And after the reading of the law, the prophets, so like after the reading of the law and the prophets, which is, you know, the Old Testament, which would be the books of Genesis all the way to Malachi and the books of the Apocrypha. OK. Um, reading on the rulers of the synagogues sent unto them saying ye men and brethren if ye have any word of exhortation for the people say on verse 16 then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said men of Israel and ye that fear the most high power Yahweh give audience the most high power of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt with an high arm brought he them out of it in about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness and when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan he divided their land to them by lot and after that he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet and afterward they desired a king and the most high power Yahweh gave unto them Saul the son of Kish a man of the tribe of Benjamin by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath the most high power Yahweh, according to his promise, raised unto Yahshua Allah, a savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Which is why our Lord, going back to Matthew, the first chapter, real quick. Matthew chapter 1. Okay. I'll start at verse 18. And the subject says, the conception and birth of Yahweh Shah. Now the birth of Yahweh Shah Hamashayach was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But when he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's what Yahweh Shai means in the ancient Lashwan Kodash, the Paleo Hebrew. All right. That word right here that they've uh that uh, Esau Edom the self proclaimed so called white man, the red Hebrew Edomite, and that old serpent called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of, devil meaning deceiver, all right, and Satan meaning adversary and accuser. He implanted that word there to um, as a stumbling block and for confusion of those of the nation of Israel that are not meant to get this 100% truth. Ultimately, that's the will of Yahweh Bashmi on the left hand side being played out. But that word doesn't mean anything. OK, the name Yahweh Shah, it means something. We, it, we know the language it comes from. We know what it means. We know why our Lord received that name. OK. OK, this is why our Lord Yahweh Shah has the name Yahweh Shah, his birth fulfills a major prophecy he's going to save his people which would be us from our sins which he which he already fulfilled one major part of that now the, the full fulfillment of that comes once he returns in those chariots and he beams up the elect of the nation of israel into the chariots and enter them into the second covenant when they'll receive those perfect bodies like the lord has those bodies with spiritual power unable to sin meaning they'll be unable to die so they'll be immortal okay and we'll have spiritual power and dominion over the earth like the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, intended from the beginning. 
Okay, you know, getting back to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. And I'll pick back up at verse 22. And it reads, And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath the most high power, Yahweh, according to his promise, raised unto Yahshua Allah a savior, Yahweh Shai. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth the most high power, Yahweh, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Shabbat day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But the Most High Power Yahweh raised him from the dead. And when he was seen, many days of them which come up, so like it which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, which is where you get the word gospel from, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, the Most High Power Yahweh hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Yahweh Shah again, as it is also written in the second psalm. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. And that's also ultimately what we're striving for. Because contrary to popular belief, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he did not send his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, um, to die on the cross, be risen, and then on his second coming, upon his second coming, Salakia, save all of the nation of Israel. Now, all Israel will be saved as it is written. But on the first go round, when our Lord makes when our Lord um, makes his second coming, he's only going to save the elect of the nation of Israel, starting with the one hundred and forty four thousand, which is twelve thousand mighty men out of each of the twelve tribes of Israel. And then underneath that, it'll be the rest of the one third, which would be the men, women and children that believe. OK. Now, the two thirds will be destroyed on this side, along with many heathen, along with many Edomites. OK, but the Edomites and the other heathen that get saved will be saved to go head first into slavery and to produce more slaves for the nation of Israel, as it is written. All right. But the sure mercies of David is what you want, because all of us have broken the law, statutes and commandments in ways that are worthy of death. Like King David did, but the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem al Shah, he had mercy on King David and he didn't put him to death. He punished him in different ways as he was still alive as King David. All right, but he didn't put, he, uh, he had put his sin away from him as it was said by the prophet Nathan. King David's sin was put away from him, so the Lord didn't put him to death. And that's ultimately what we want. We catch our hell now, similar to King David, so we can be exalted by Yahweh Bashem al Shah later, so we can uh, have our sins forgiven through Yahweh Shah's blood. So we can be of that number that's covered by Yahweh Shai's blood and righteousness, not covered by his blood and wickedness. Because one thing the Christian church doesn't teach our people is that when you say I'm covered by the blood of, you know, they say that fake name Cheesy Rice, but I'll say his real name, Yahweh Shai. They don't understand. They don't know him. There's two ways to be covered by the blood. You can be covered by the blood and righteousness because you're of the elect that, that have been uh, chosen since before the foundation of the world. Or you could be covered by his blood and wickedness because two thirds of our people had said to they uh, basically told the Romans to kill Yahweh Shai and let his blood be upon them and their children. Two thirds of our people asked for the Lord's blood to be upon them and their children. That's how much envy and stupidity our people had. And ultimately, it's for the sake of prophecy. You can do nothing against the truth. All right. No one can resist the will of the Heavenly Father. If he's written it, if he's uh, written it down in your story to be a two thirds scoffing nigger. 
you know, that's what you'll be. If, he, if you were that back then, that's what you'll be today because reincarnation also is biblical. This is another reason why we serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling to the best of our ability. Okay, we don't want to tempt the grace of the Lord because he could easily have you be called. And just because we talk about the one third and the two third, it doesn't mean everything's cut and dry. You have individuals that are two third niggas or so it seems. And then the Lord uh, wakes them up through the uh, preaching of this gospel, through the men that he's dealing with. And then that person wakes up and he repents from his wicked ways. He puts down the blood. He stops committing adultery. He stops stealing. You know, he stops being whatever the hell he was in the world that Yahweh Bosh Shai doesn't approve of. And then from there. The Lord starts dealing with that man and you see a, a significant change that nothing else on this uh, earth can bring. And whereas you also have on the flip side, individuals that have been in this knowledge and this truth and they fell off and they started going off. And, and that's basically the Lord taking his Holy Spirit from them. So it works both ways. This is why we um, we strive to have Yahweh Bosh Mel Shai keep his Holy Spirit on us, because as it is written, he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And that all goes back into the topic of this epistle. But I'll finish reading the rest of these verses and I'll get right to it. Acts chapter 13, verse 34, and it reads, And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And that corruption is talking about your body going to the grave which is hell, okay? That's where the word hell comes from in the Hebrew. I think it's uh, Sha'al. I haven't gotten it in a while, but I believe it's Sha'al, and that means the grave. So when your body goes to the grave, we all know this is a basic concept we learned even in the world. Your body goes to the grave, it gets broken down and decomposed by maggots, so forth and so on. So that's what that's referring to right there. It's not referring to going to a place where you burn for all eternity, okay? And in contrary to those popular, those are uh, not popular, but those bugged out uh, fables, our lawyer, Yahweh Shah, didn't go to hell for three days and didn't teach anybody. You know, people are burning. He's trying to teach them the Torah. No, his body was in the grave for a, a, a three day period, which is a period of 72 hours. OK, and once that period was fulfilled, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, raised our Lord from the dead. He resurrected him. OK, that's what this is getting into. Verse 36, for David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of the Most High Power, Yahweh fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. <clears throat> this means that once King David had lived his life, okay, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, you know, by his will, King David lived his life. And by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's will, once again, King David, he passed away in his old age, just like anybody else would, who, you know, the Lord gives you a, a long life. And then he was laid unto his fathers in a sepulcher. Okay, he was laid in the burying place of his fathers before him. And he saw corruption, meaning King David's body, it was, de it was decomposed, you know, the way that most people's body gets decomposed. Verse 37, but he whom the most high power, Yahweh raised again, saw no corruption. Right, because our Lord Yahweh Shai, he was perfect in the law of Masha. Okay. He committed no sin as Yahweh Shai. Now, as Adam and as King Solomon, he did commit sin. But as Yahweh Shai, not only did he not commit any sin in that body, but he also atoned for the sins he committed as Adam and as King Solomon, you know, by him being that true high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He was able to perform the high priestly duties that is uh, performed on the Day of Atonement, where that high priest goes into the holiest of holies and he performs a sin offering, an atonement for his sins and the sins of the nation of Israel. And for our Lord Yahweh Shai to have been perfect in the law of Masha, OK, this is something that... um. This is something that uh, Elder Yashawamba has spoke about before on many occasions because he gets into this topic heavy. For Yahweh Shai to have been perfect in the law and to have fulfilled all of these different intricate aspects of the law. Let's just say, OK, we call him the high priest. How could he have been the high priest if he's atoning for sins that, you know, for himself in the nation of Israel, which is the duty of the high priest on the day of atonement? How could he do that if he had no sin? So. Once again, reincarnation is biblical. You do pay for the sins you committed in your past life. Yes, Yahweh Shai has been here many times before, just not as Yahweh Shai. Okay? But that's another topic for another epistle. But the point is, our Lord Yahweh Shai, he saw no corruption because the Heavenly Father Yahweh raised him from the dead. He resurrected him. Okay? Be it known unto you, therefore, this is uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 38, Salakia. 
Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Masha. Right. So this right here is not saying that the law of Masha, which is, the you know, the law, statutes and commandments are done away with. This is simply letting you know that we are under a new covenant. We're under uh, the covenant of grace right now. That's what Yahweh Shai, one of the things Yahweh Shai went on the cross for and sacrificed his life was so we of the nation of Israel could be under this grace period. Because under the first covenant standard, you know, we had to be perfect in the law. But since you're in this flesh, you can't possibly ever keep the law perfectly. So you would always be subject to a cycle of going off, having to, uh, you know, fall upon sleep, meaning you have to pass away. Your body goes back to the earth, decomposes, it sees corruption. And your spirit goes back to the Heavenly Father who gave it. And then you reincarnate, which is different from resurrection. Reincarnate meaning your spirit comes back in a new body. That new body is uh, created by a man of your father's seed line going into a woman three or four generations later on down the line. And this is why people come back in the lineage of their fathers. You know, a lot of people, all right, when you get the understanding of reincarnation, you come back as your own great grandchild in some instances. OK. That's how reincarnation works. This is why our Lord talked. This is why the Heavenly Father talks about the third and fourth generation of them that hate him when it talks about visiting the iniquities. OK. And, and showing uh, mercy upon thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. So if you were righteous, you'll come back in the third and fourth generation and you'll be righteous again. If you were wicked, you'll come back in the third and fourth generation and be wicked again. All right. Now, all all commit sin. But the righteous are different in the way that they commit sin because they will actually repent and do what's pleasing unto Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, as the scripture says, a just man falls seven times but rises back up. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. All right. The the uh, the, the hopeful elect, they'll commit sin, you know, not willingly, but you know, just by by virtue of being not virtue, but by the simple fact that they're in the flesh. And from there, you know, they'll have a broken spirit and a contrite heart, and they'll repent to Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. And they'll try their best to offend less, as the scripture says, as it's commanded to do. But the wicked, they won't try. They'll just figure they might as well just keep sinning because, you know, sin feels good. OK, it's a lot more harder to deny your flesh than it is to uh, cater to it. All right. But right here, the point is, Yahweh Shai, if you believe when Yahweh Shai, you, you're justified by things you couldn't be justified in the law of Masha because our righteousness is of Yahweh Shai. He's our mediator of this, of this new covenant, as well as this grace period we're in. Acts chapter 13, verse 40. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Okay, which is this right here, verse 41. Behold, ye despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Right. And that's a warning right there for these scoffers and these two third niggas that are that know that they Israelites and they want to pervert the doctrine and teach whatever doctrine they want to. You know what IUIC's most recent doctrine is uh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. What did they say recently? I think they said something along the lines of Israel never dealt with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. They were always only dealing with Yahweh Shai. It's it just all types of bugged out stuff. OK, but the point is. <clears throat> this is what happens when the Lord is showing that he's um, that he's not dealing with individuals in the nation of Israel. Because those that hate the son, they hate the father. And one of the major stumbling blocks for our people is Yahweh Shai. You may think a stumbling block is just um, knowing certain breakdowns or not knowing certain prophecies and stuff. But no, Yahweh Shai, he's the ultimate stumbling block, you know, because he, he, he will offend those that think they know something about the law when they don't know anything. He's the word made flesh. So how the hell can you know more than him? All right. But, you know, that's what that gets into. Behold, ye despise us and wonder and perish for our work of work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Because two thirds of our people back then, you know, the Sanhedrin, the wicked scribes and Pharisees, not all scribes and Pharisees was wicked. Uh, you know, the Sadducees, the, the Zealots. All right. These individuals, these high, chief high priests. You know, which is another reason why Alazar of Sakari, if he had if he had any spiritual discernment, he shouldn't even want anything to do with that name or that title, because the chief high priest, you know, it's not always a bad uh, name or title. But when you predominantly hear it in the scriptures, it 
it correlates to those wicked chief priests, wicked high chief priests that was basically uh, persecuting our lawyer Howard Shai and plotted to get him put to death. But anyway, this right here, it, this occurs when you say things like what Alazar said, that uh, Yahweh Shai will be paying tithes to the Levitical priesthood in the kingdom when his priesthood, the priesthood of Melchizedek, is superior to the Levitical priesthood. All right, when the Levitical priesthood was just a shadow of that uh, true priesthood in the heavens, which is the Melchizedek priesthood. You know, the, this is what it means to be a despiser. It doesn't mean that you will always out, come out right and say you despise our Lord. But you show it by your actions and your works and your fruits. And you have to watch out for that because those that do that, they're in danger of the judgment. Because if you don't if you don't accept our Lord, then that means you don't accept his blood and righteousness. You won't allow his, you saying that you don't need his blood to cover your sins. You got your own sins covered. And since no man can be justified by the works of the law, you basically asking the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to charge your sins to your tab. And that's going to require your blood. That's going to require you to be put to death. Because our Lord is not going to go back on the cross a second time, least of all for wicked ass niggas that think they know everything. Okay. So, verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached unto them the next Shabbat. Okay. So, that's the point of what I wanted to get into right here. Which goes into the first two of the greatest commandments. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10. And I'll start at verse 10. And it reads, And I stayed in the mount according to the first time, forty days and forty nights. And the Lord Yahweh hearkened unto me at the at that time also. And the Lord Yahweh would not destroy thee. Because if you get the history, reading the Torah, the Thawarah, our people had provoked the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi uh, From the time of the Exodus to the time of the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter, our people had provoked the Heavenly Father, Yahweh ten times. Let that resonate. Just how, just how much audacity our people got to provoke the Heavenly Father to anger, to keep complaining about miracles being performed on their behalf. Reading on verse 11, and the Lord Yahweh said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swear unto their fathers to give unto them. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord Yahweh, thy power, require of thee? But to fear the Lord Yahweh, Alahayaka, which means your power, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord Yahweh, Alahayaka, with all thy heart. And with all thy soul to keep the commandments of the Lord Yahweh and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Basically, this precept is asking you a straight up question. Like, what is the like, you know, what does the Lord, what does he require of you? What more does he want from you? But to just keep his law, statutes and commandments and to love him with all your heart and with all your soul. And do what he told you to do for your good, because if you listen to what he tells you, to do you're going to be blessed it's going to you're going to have good results you know it's a, uh what people say in the world um you know what is that a win-win situation that's what it is when you keep the law says commands of your house to the best of your ability and now through your house shot you have an even more surefire way because there's many of laws that you break every single day that we all break that we can't help but break because we're in captivity we can't wear mixed fabrics. That's that's breaking the law right there. So why, you know, just off of that alone, even if it's not a, 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 an immediate death sentence, if, even if there's certain laws, that's not an immediate death sentence. If you break one law, you're guilty of breaking them all. So how are you justified through Yahweh Shai's blood and by believing on Yahweh Shai in truth and sincerity and rehearsing the righteous acts due to the faith that you have in Yahweh Shai? Verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14, and it reads, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord Yahweh's. Okay? I'll read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord Yahweh's, Alahayaka. The earth also with all that is therein. So like it, the earth also with all that therein is 
only the Lord Yahweh had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Meaning the Lord Yahweh, he owns everything. You got Jake out here uh, deleting each other and selling each other out and, and bending over backwards for Esau and getting buck broke for Esau for fiat currency, for paper dollars that Esau wipes his ass with, literally. And in some cases, they do even stranger things for gold and silver and real estate. When the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he owns all of that. He owns every resource on the earth. He owns every soul on the earth. He owns everything on the earth, every beast whether it be a fowl of the heaven, whether it be a fish of the sea and the rest of the creatures in the sea. He owns the stars, the sun, the moon, the everything. But he, out of all these things that he owned, he chose our people. This precept is supposed to let you meditate upon just how deep that is, how deep the love it is that the Heavenly Father Yahweh has for us, despite how he may chasten us at times. And even that is for our own good. Even that is out of love. So we got to keep this in mind also when we're around our elders or our brothers and we get rebuked. That's the Heavenly Father Yahweh rebuking us through him. Or, you know, that's the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai rebuking us through that brother or that elder or whoever it may be. Okay, because just like in the world, if you don't, you know, they say what? A true friend will let you know you mess it up, but, you know, a fake friend won't tell you. You know, it, that goes back to the law. But the point is, that's how much love the Heavenly Father has for us. So we it's only right that we reciprocate that, meaning we we uh show we keep that same energy, so to speak, like they say in the world, keep that same energy. You know, the Lord, he he didn't have to do anything. Nobody forced him to love us. That's the point of this precept with his infinite wisdom and infinite uh, sovereignty, meaning he's not controlled by nothing. He owns and controls everything and he chose to love us. Let that resonate. Just that alone should make you grateful to be one of his people and eager to fulfill the duties of a Hebrew Israelite. Which goes right here into this precept. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16 and it reads, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, which is your mind, and be no more stiff-necked. Right, because two-thirds of our people, they've always been uh, stiff-necked. From the time of Masha, getting our people out of the wilderness, who wants to lock you out of Egypt and into the wilderness to try to get them to the promised land? If they, because of their complaining, all right, about how their condition of life had changed, um, those that were rebellious, to lock you, that generation was deleted by the Heavenly Father Yahweh and their children saw the promised land. Okay, they kept complaining about doing certain aspects, uh, doing certain commandments that they were ordered to do by the Heavenly Father Himself, despite the miracles He showed them. And they were they were getting deleted. They were getting plagued, so forth and so on. They was committing idolatry, everything that was just off. Then you fast forward. We get into the promised land. Jake starts going off again, committing adultery against the Heavenly Father Yahweh, which is idolatry, worshiping other idols, and getting into the the weird, disgusting, satanic practices associated with those uh those idols. Okay, those satanic practices, meaning that they're adverse to the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, that he commanded us to walk in for our good. So they walked in some stuff that was pleasing to the flesh, but ultimately it leads to uh, to deletion and destruction, perdition. Okay. And then we got kicked out. We got put into captivity. All right. Those uh, what the prophet Daniel showed us in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, the four beasts. Okay. The first being the Assyr uh, the Assyrio Babylonian uh, captivity, okay. Northern kingdom went into, under the Assyrians. Southern kingdom went under the Neo Babylonians, okay. Then you have the Medo Persian captivity, which was you know that was Southern kingdom. Well, that was uh, and then the the Greek captivity, then the Roman captivity, and right now we're in the second part of the Roman captivity. All of this came upon us because of our um, us being stiff necked. We not us not us hardening our neck when we told to do something. The Lord says, turn your head this way. Jake want to stay looking in the in the wrong direction, being stiff necked. That heart of stone that goes back to the first covenant standard where uh, this covenant was written on stone. All right. And our people had a stony heart because of that. But 
in the new covenant under the grace period, the Lord said he's going to give us a heart of flesh. And you understand that flesh is solid, but it's still more more malleable. You know, like they say in the world, bend, but don't break. That's what this uh, what the, the grace period allows us to do. It allows us to move the way that we need to move without breaking. OK, because Jake wanted to harden the neck. They wanted to stiffen their neck. So, you know, when the Lord brought down the rod, Jake got broken into pieces. So this right here, this lets us know that the Lord, even during, even under Masha, he was telling us to um, circumcise our heart, the foreskin of our heart, which, you know, goes deep into the physical circumcision. OK, when you circumcise, OK, that's getting rid of the excess, you know, on your rod, so to speak. That's the physical circumcision. And it's also a sign of the covenant between us and the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai. But when you circumcise your mind, your heart. That is how you can actually honor that circumcision. As it says in the, I forgot, I think the book of Romans, the second chapter, where it talks about um, how you can make your circumcision uncircumcision based off of your works. Because you had jakes that are physically circumcised, but they still would commit adultery. They still would um, sin against the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashmi, So that's not honoring the Lord. That's making it seem like, okay, circumcision doesn't mean anything. That makes that makes it seem like you you basically telling the Heavenly Father, you basically showing the heathen and people around about, and you're showing the congregation that, oh, yeah, I, can, I got circumcised, but it don't mean anything. I'm going to still commit this adultery. The Lord don't see me. I'm going to still uh, defraud my brothers. The Lord don't see me. That's what that, that's what that, uh, that's the message that sends across, you know? So that's important to understand that we got to make sure that we internally right so we can actually do what the Lord wants us to do. We can't say we love him, but we eating unclean foods. We can't say we love him, but we get offended when we got to get persecuted for his namesake. When we understand that that comes with the territory. And then here's one thing that helps me. This is a meditation that I um that I utilize when it comes to the, the coming persecution. When that goes down for Yahweh Shah's namesake, for the namesake of Yahweh Bashem Shah. The Lord is doing that to chasten us, one, and make us better. And two, also to show us what he's already been saying, which is these heathen don't fucking love you. And what brothers have been saying, uh, the blood brother Shamwa Allah, he said it at camp yesterday. You know, for all these jakes out there that are so weak for their people, the or like, oh, my father won't do this. My, my mom must, my mom mess with me, man. These are going to be the same niggas that turn you into Esau. Once martial law happens, once the men of the Lord start getting persecuted, okay, these are the same people that are going to turn you in lest Yahweh Bashem Yahushai be dealing with them. This is what you got to factor in. The Lord is the one that loves you for a certainty. Anybody else, it's a fucking toss up. Only those that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is dealing with in truth and sincerity even have a chance of, uh, of actually truly loving you where it actually matters. You got people in the world, you know, if you got a good relationship with your family, nobody's saying be a demon to them. No, you know, use this world is not abusing it. And as the scriptures also say, if at all possible, be at peace with all men. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, giving no offense to anything that the ministry be not blamed. Because you already know our people are simple and stupid. Just like what I was just mentioning in the book of Numbers. All right. Our, you know, the wicked of our people, they complained about having to go into the promised land. And defeat the giants that were there, and they said, "Oh, why did the Lord bring us out here to lead us? Let us set a captain us over. Let us set a captain over us and go back into Egypt." When you were being fucking deleted in Egypt, they were destroying the firstborn uh, sons of Israel. They were trying to cut us off from being a people and mow down our numbers. But the Lord, He was protecting us through all of that. So likewise, when the persecution comes, it's going to be a lot of jigs that's in this truth. All right. And some that know of this truth, some that have relatives that are in the truth, you know, they're going to turn. They're like, yeah, I know he's evil. like they're going to start, you know, they're going to spill the beans. Niggas can't hold water. That's what that's what Yahweh Shah comes in for. Nobody's uh, solid of their own merit. It's by the spirit of Yahweh Shah dealing with them, you know, and the more Yahweh Shah deals with you, the more stronger you become. That's why we ultimately keep uh, exhorting brothers to pray and fast. And to sincerely seek Yahweh Bash Miao Shai and always do better the next day than you did the day before, because the Lord sees that as a righteous sacrifice. That's when you start to see the Lord manifesting those miracles of him fighting for you. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. For the Lord Yahweh, your power, 
is a power of powers and Lord of Lords, a great power, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward, which is beautiful because it goes back into what I said. No, nobody can make the Heavenly Father do anything. He wasn't bribed to love the children of Israel. He, with his infinite power and sovereignty, he chose to love us. The same God that made the heavens and the earth through his only begotten son and made the Allah Hayim and ordered them to create everything. He said, these are my favorite people. He made many nations, but he always only cared about that chosen lineage, which is us. And that's a blessing. Verse 18, he doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow and loveth the stranger and giving him food and raiment. Okay. So understand this, man. The Lord, he, and in this case, spiritually speaking, we are the fatherless and the widow. Okay. Because the fatherless and the widow, yeah. And, and, um, there's in our law, when you get into that, it actually gets into people that's literally fatherless and people in a woman that's literally a widow. Cause you know, in the ancient world, especially it back then, there was no room for none of this dumb, retarded, delusional feminist bullshit. If you didn't have a man, you was fucked just to keep it frank. Because there was too many perils in the ancient world to be sitting out here talking about I'm a boss chick. In the ancient world, nobody gives a damn about your money sometimes. And then if a dude want if a dude wanted some if he wanted, let's say if a dude wanted to grape a woman, he would just grape her. She couldn't pay him all. He don't want your money. He just want the box. Now a man can deter that because now. This dude has to tread carefully. Even if he is still on demon time, he has to tread carefully. And then the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he could easily deliver that, that potential grapist up into the hands of that woman's husband. And for the fatherless, you know, just like in uh in these modern times, Jake that don't have a father figure, okay, they they left to either a wicked ad, a, you know, a mother that's just ditzy and that teaches him not, you know, whatever she wants to teach him and mold him into a simp, but a woman can't raise a boy to be a man. Or they have the worst type of influences, you know, like for Jake, they get in the gangs and stuff like that. You got the OG and all this other shit, a dude that teaches you how to hustle, you know, like the scripture says, our people are wise to do wickedness, but to do good, they have no knowledge. So that puts you in danger of the Lord judging you. And then going into uh, how the Lord loveth the stranger, ultimately all the nation of Israel have become strangers. We've all been exiled out of our holy land. And if it wasn't for Yahweh Shah's sacrifice, we all would have been out here thinking that we were just Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and, and speckled bird, you know? But the Lord woke us up back to our true nationalities, let us know through faith, all right, who we are. Through faith, we um, we know, you know, we, we move through faith when it comes to what tribe we're from. And then all things will be revealed unto us in the kingdom in due time. But ultimately, it's through faith and Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. And, and before that, it's, it's through his mercy that we've even gotten this far. So let me go ahead to the next precept, Matthew chapter 22. And I'm going to start at verse 34 and it reads, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Yahweh Shah said unto him, and this is rare, let us was our Lord speaking. It's our Lord Yahweh Shah speaking out of his own mouth. Thou shalt love the Lord Yahweh, thy power, or thou shalt love the Lord Yahweh Allah with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second, <coughs> Salakia, Matthew 22, verse 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these hang so like on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Right. So there you go right there. That that lines back up into what I just read in Deuteronomy the tenth chapter. The greatest commandment out of the two greatest commandments is to love the Lord, Yahweh Allah with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Okay. And when if you love the Lord, let's get that real quick. John chapter 14, verse 15, and it reads, 
Read that as Lord Yahweh Shah speaking. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And that lines up into what uh, the elder Zion Allah, he had uh, once told us at camp, which was when he asked us what the two greatest commandments was. And he said, you cannot do the second without doing the first. And I just read what both of those were in Matthew, the 22nd chapter. The first one was to love the Lord, Yahweh, Allah, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And if you love him, you keep his commandments. And the second was to love your neighbor as yourself and your neighbor gets into your fellow Israelite. Now, let's break that down a little more with the book of Romans, chapter 13. Verse eight. And it reads, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Meaning you if you a man that knows that a, a, another man has a wife, you don't have sex with her. And how can we apply that in these modern times as women lie? As men of the Lord, as men who fear the Lord, Yahweh Bash me all shot. We don't need we don't need another brother to be around us to do this right here. But to show we fear the Lord, it's about what you do in the absence of brothers and in the absence of elders. You ask that woman, does she have a man? And if something in your spirit is telling you that she might be lying, then you, you, you did that. It's not even worth the risk. Okay? You know a brother dealing with a woman, or it might be a even if it's a possibility he might be dealing with her. You know? Me personally, I would I wouldn't even I wouldn't even fucking worry about it. I would just move on. Like, look, there's plenty of fish in the sea, as they used to say in the world. And you know, once you get into this knowledge and this truth, you see examples of it. All right. Just in a city, just in a city like mine alone, you, you get to see dozens of women walk past. You know, half of them may actually have men, half of them may not. You know, the Lord made more women than men for a reason. So there's no need to commit adultery. Reading on, thou shalt not kill. Which actually goes into murder because there are times where the Heavenly Father, the Yahweh Shah, commanded our people to put uh, put individuals to death that broke the law or just or just were wicked heathen nations. So I'm saying that so no one will uh, trip up over the stumbling block of that word right there. It's not a contradiction. OK, this is why you got to get into the Hebrew and the Greek and understand these words. Thou shalt not steal. Pretty self-explanatory. Thou shalt not bear false witness, meaning don't lie. Thou shalt not covet. OK, meaning you don't. You're not pressed to get what somebody else has. You worry about getting your own. Because when you covet, that means you want what somebody else has to the point where you don't give a damn how you hurt them to get it. You'll do whatever you got to do to get what they what they got, whether it means you got to lie on them, you got to hurt them physically, emotionally, mentally, or even put them to death. Okay? And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. See how all of those precepts just lined up right there. Because if the, the commandments the Heavenly Father Yahweh gave us, if you love those commandments, it's like if you love Yahweh Shah, it's like if you love Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, you'll keep those commandments. And these commandments have been broken down right here. And all of these commandments right here, if you get, if you at least understand the basic level of what they're about, then that's how you love your neighbor. And I've said this before in a previous video through the spirit, because an individual can say he loves you. It could be a dude that gives you money, you know, like five hundred dollars every time you need something, whatever the case might be. But if he's a damn adulterer. You know, that dude doesn't he doesn't love you, even if he hasn't committed adultery with your woman, what's stopping him from doing it? You think if you told him about the truth, he has stopped committing adultery. Who knows? There's a, a likelihood that he might not, because most people, Yahweh Bosh Mel Shah is not dealing with two thirds of the nation of Israel. And that's a large number since our people is like the sand of the sea. So for the Lord to not deal with the majority of a people that's like the sand of the sea, that should let you know right there. That should make it easier for you to determine who you should deal with from a distance if you got to deal with them at all. Salakia. Salakia. But yeah, that's the point right there, you know. If you don't love the Heavenly Father, if you're dealing with individuals that don't love the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, there's only God saying Yahweh Shai. OK, you dealing with individuals that don't know what love is. So loving the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah is ultimately the most loving and wise thing you can do. While on earth. 
So yeah, worshiping these idols is not only stupid, but it's also evil. Because there's many wicked practices that go into worshiping these idols. Even if it starts off with what somebody deems with their limited human understanding as innocent, <clears throat> ultimately it's a slippery slope. That's why you see these celebrities wax worse and worse. So they seem crazier. They seem more unhinged. They seem more uh, ill at ease. Okay. Because they know they've done some strange shit to maintain their riches, man. You got these individuals out here deleting their own best friend and then, you know, dropping an album like they really heartbroken about it, you know, deluding themselves. That's why you always see them smoking all types of weed. They got to wear the black shades all the damn time to try to, you know, because they say the scripture says that the, uh, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So this is another reason why, you know, more of these celebrities and these jakes that's in the more wickedness, you know, more wickedness. This is why they always want to cover their eyes up. All right. Now, there's nothing wrong with wearing shades if you just like them. But notice that, you know, these these individuals are always wearing shades. They always got to smoke weed. They always got to drink, you know, take their mind off of things. And the, the shariam they was getting into that yesterday at camp, how, you know, the scripture says that wine was made to make a man merry, you know. And, you know, this place right here, Babylon the Great, it always wants to ply our people with different strong drink and wine and, and narcotics, which is nothing wrong with the strong drink or the wine, but the narcotics is going off. But the point is, whatever they can to alter your uh, your um, your state of consciousness so you don't focus on serious uh, issues, that's what they'll do. But when they do it with these celebrities, it's because, you know, that's how they can suppress uh, the guilt that will come because you know Jake Jake you know even when they do wickedness they get convicted in their spirit like right? as an Israelite you know what you don't belong doing the Lord's not going to let you be completely scot free with it you know he's going to let you do the wickedness and ultimately lead you up to being destroyed but you you want to be convicted while you do it and Jake you know to try to suppress those thoughts that's why they always you know hitting the blunt four or five blunts and you know doing all this other type of stuff but the point is all all these idolatrous practices lead to something that's disgusting, you know, like baby sacrifices, uh, uh, graping babies, selling people, deleting babies. You know, this is why the Lord put kicked the Canaanites out of our land. This is why he gave us the ability to put them to death and put them to flight because they were committing abomination in the land. And two thirds of our people. All right. They ended up, despite the fact we put these Canaanites uh, under our foot. Two thirds of our people started to worship after their gods, which once again, it goes back to, you know, you violating the, the, the greatest commandment, which is love the Lord Yahweh with all thy heart, with all thy soul. And with all thy mind, you weren't doing that. Because if you sit right here worshiping these other gods that did not give you what they what you received, you know, you worshiping the idols. Which are these false gods of these heathen. That were committing abomination in the land in the name of those idols. Why would you want anything to do with an idol that's telling you you got to delete a baby to get power when the Lord gives you power just because. And righteousness. But that goes into, you know, not loving the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. You know, Jake's that was saying, oh, yeah, I'm an Israelite, but you were, but you got idols in your pocket. Let me get that real quick in the Apocrypha. I think it's the book of Sirach. It's one of the precepts that was brought out yesterday. Um, Sirach. Um, okay. I got the wrong chapter, so let me type it in. Yep. Dwadi Habash Mion Shah. This is the book of Sirach, better known as Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 12, and it reads, Woe be to the fearful hearts. It's like, woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that goeth two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore, he shall not, it's like, therefore shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Right. So, keeping that in mind that goes back into um what i was saying if you don't keep the first of the two greatest commandments which is loving the lord with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind you are a sinner that goes two ways why because you'll say you love the lord but when it comes time to put that to the test when he starts proving you you show that you got more faith in fucking idols false gods that don't exist they can't 
eat, they can't sleep. It's like it. They can't uh see, they can't hear, and they certainly can't save. All right. But you don't but you believe in those, but you don't believe in the in the God of heaven and earth. Those idols would need, would need you to save them if a flood happened or if an earthquake happened. You'd have to pick them up and run. The Heavenly Father, how about Shmuel I don't need you to do a damn thing, but do what the hell he told you to do. He don't need you to save him. Which is another, which is a, a key indicator that the Heavenly Father Yahweh, he is what he says he is. There is no God with him. I believe in one of the Psalms, the Lord says that if he was hungry, he wouldn't tell us. That lets you know that he doesn't need anything. Anything he ever told us to do was to test our obedience. <clears throat> But, you know, once again, if you don't believe in the Lord, you won't be defended, especially in uh, in Jacob's trouble. And most importantly, even, well, coupled with Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation when the MOTB, that micro uh, RFID potato chip is made mandatory. OK, if the Lord is not dealing with you, if you don't believe in him, he's going to put the spirit on you to be stupid. He's going to take his Holy Spirit off you, his Rechag Wadash, and it's so like his Rechag Wadash. And it's going to put that, that worldly spirit on you where you believe in the ways of the, of the world and you're going to take that sea hip and you're going to be destroyed. Okay? Now let me get that account that I was mentioning earlier in the book of Numbers, chapter 14. Okay? Starting at verse 1. And the subject says, The people rebel, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Masha and against Aharon. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would the Most High Power Yahweh that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would the Most High Power Yahweh we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord Yahweh brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Matazarium. This is that unbelief and this is that two ways bullshit that the Lord hates and justifiably so. And for brothers that got women, OK, you want you know how, how annoying it is where things is good. And, you know, y'all all she's all, you know, in her place and you doing what you do. You making money in X, Y, Z or however that goes. But something happens, you know, like a little a, a little bumpy road happens and she starts losing faith as if you haven't rescued both of you through the spirit of Poppy How Bosh Me Shah, of course, as if you haven't gotten both of y'all out of jams before, as if life don't come with ups and downs. That's how the nation that's how the two thirds of Israel is unto the Heavenly Father. That annoying ass woman that don't got no faith in her man, but she but when things go good, she's she's relaxed. She she knows how to be quiet, but when things go bad. She forgets all of the different deliverances. Numbers chapter 14, verse 5. Then Masha and Aharon fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Yahweh the son of Nun, and Caleb, Kalab, the son of Japune, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Because Joshua, the son of Nun, was of the tribe of Ephraim, and Caleb, the son of Japune, was of the tribe of Judah. And our people were uh, told to send out one representative from each of the 12 tribes to spy out the land. And everybody else came back with a weak and a scary, a little punk, a little punk ass report like, oh, they're too big. They're this and that. But Joshua and Caleb, they came back with the righteous, the proper report that the Lord is with us. We can take them. And that came through faith. Of course, if you walk up to a, 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 a fucking 10 foot, a group of 10 foot giants that are men of war, you're going to say, oh, well, we can't take them if you're in the flesh. But if you walk in the spirit of power, you're about Shmuel Shai, and you believe what he, and the promises that he just gave you, he said, I delivered these people up into your hands. You're going to come back with that report that Joshua and Caleb did. <clears throat> and as I heard, I think Elder Yahshua would say before, that was symbolic of the two tribes, the tribe of Ephraim, which the tribe Joshua came from. His name is uh, Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew. Not our Lord, but this is another Joshua. This is Moses' successor. Okay. Yahweh Shah from the, the son of Nun from the tribe of Ephraim, Aparium, 
and Caleb, the son of Japune, Kalab, from the tribe of Judah, Yahawada. This was symbolic of Ephraim and Judah becoming the head tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, respectfully, or respectively. All right. Um, what else do we have right here? Verse. All right. Numbers chapter 14, verse 7. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord Yahweh delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord Yahweh, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord Yahweh is with us. Fear them not. Okay. This is the point right here. And I love this verse because this reminds me of something that Jake says in the world. You know, that they say it in wickedness, but in righteousness, this is basically what Caleb and Joshua were saying to our people to try to get them back in the spirit. <clears throat> he was basically saying, look, these, these heathen, these dudes, these niggas is food. These niggas is food for us, man. We're going we gonna to do them dirty we're gonna get our promised land what are you what are you scared about and to get some context i gotta go back one chapter let me go to number chapter 13 <coughs> so lucky number chapter 13 and i want to get straight to the point um uh, where is it at where is it at where is it at Come on, here it goes. The point is right here. Numbers chapter 13, verse 25. The spies report. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Masha and to Aharon and, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, Yasha Allah, unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and shewed them the fruit of the land. And they told to him, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and their cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea. And by the coast of Jordan and Caleb stilled the people before Masha and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are all like for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Yasha Allah, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And they like and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Right. So these niggas came back with an evil report. They that report was not based in faith. At all. Because the Lord said he was going to deliver these these heathen into our hands. So why the hell are you coming back talking about how big they are? The Lord don't give a damn. By this time, the Lord had already um, we had already defeated. Uh, I, would, I think his name was Og, the king of Bashan and another uh, king from a mighty nation. So. Once again, Jake with that 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 fucking going two ways bullshit. <clears throat> you know, and this go, and it reminds me of a scripture that says, um, "Oh yeah, it reminded me of when Lord Yahweh Shah was talking about that serving with the talents, and he hid it in a napkin. When our Lord said that, uh, through thine own words will I condemn you, thy wicked servant. Because you know, Jake, you can see when Jake don't got faith by the shit that they say out of their mouth." And now, yeah, you know, certain times we got we got accounts of our righteous forefathers, you know, having, you know, like a moment of weakness. But 
you know, for the most part, when Jake starts speaking like this, it just shows you they didn't listen to a, a fucking thing that was said. But let me do this right here. I'm going to just get a quick account of who the um, the individuals were that were sent out. Numbers chapter 13, verse 3, and it reads, And Masha, by the commandment of the Lord, sent from the wilderness of Paran all those men. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. And these were the names of the tribe of Reuben, Shamua, the son of Zakor, of the tribe of Simeon, Shapat, the son of Horai, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Japune, of the tribe of Issachar, Igal, the son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim, Hawashai, the son of Nan. And that was Joshua before his name was changed to, um, <clears throat> it says O'Shea, that was his name. And then it was changed to Joshua by Moses. But in Hebrew, his name is Hawashai, and Moses put the Yah on it. So it went from Hawashai, meaning deliverer, to Yah Hawashai, which means he saves, he delivers. Okay. Same name as our Lord, but this is not our Lord. Okay. This is another. Another great man in the congregation of Israel, and he comes from the tribe of Ephraim. Verse 9. Of the tribe of Benjamin, Paltai, the son of Raphu. Of the tribe of Zebulon, Gadiel, the son of Sodai. Of the tribe of Joseph, namely of the tribe of Manasseh. <coughs> Salakia. Of the tribe of Joseph, namely the tribe of Manasseh. Gadai, the son of Susai. Of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamali. Of the tribe of Asher. Uh, Sethur, the son of Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabai, the son of Vopsai, of the tribe of Gad, Geul, son of Machai. These are the names of the men which Masha sent to spy out the land, and Masha called Hawashai, the son of Nun, Yahawashai. Okay, so this is when Joshua had his name changed into Joshua. Okay, but uh, that's the point right here I wanted to get was that our people, they was basically, you know. <laughs> the Lord sent them out there, you know, to show who had faith because it was through faith that the Lord was doing all of these righteous acts for our forefathers. All right. Those that, that had faith in the Lord, they were defended. Those who didn't, you know, even before even before the evil touched them in certain cases, like right here in this account, you got Jake raising up a damn evil report and just giving up being weak. All right. And even the suggestion that that comes out of a faithless mouth even sounds stupid. And that's why you see certain brothers and certain elders get really pissed off when they hear the effeminate shit that comes out of Jake's mouth. Because it makes no sense for you to, to just give up on having your own sovereignty to go back to the land where you were oppressed. You were out in the wilderness for a reason. We were out in the wilderness because in the land of Egypt, the inhabitants of that land were oppressing our people and killing our children and putting us in hard labor. And by this point, the Lord had already plagued that land and destroyed it and put their Pharaoh and that and his army to deletion. So why the hell do you think going back to Egypt would be the best course of action? This shows you the stupidity of an unfaithful individual of the nation of Israel. This is why you got to pray to the Lord that he keeps that that righteous, uh, faithful spirit on you. OK. So. Numbers chapter 14. I'm going to pick back up at what Caleb and uh, Joshua was telling these, these wicked ass individuals. And it reads, Only rebel ye not against the Lord Yahweh, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord Yahweh is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord Yahweh appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Yahshua Allah. So these niggas were so, and this go, and this is spiritual because even now, you got niggas where it's like, okay, they want to make a punk ass excuse to not do the work of the Lord, and then when the men of the Lord convict them in their spirit by speaking unto them words of encouragement, it may cut, it may you know, it may come off, uh, you know, in meekness, and sometimes it may come off a little bit more rougher because you know, tough love. But these words are supposed to exhort you if you're righteous. It's supposed to cut you and motivate you like, damn, I'm tripping. Ox Salakia. Salakia, how about me all shy? And then get back on it. But these niggas, they get so offended that they, that they, um, that the, the, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? That their effeminate nature got revealed and, you know, that they can't have their way. And they want to put you to death. They want to put the real men of the Lord to death because for the Jakes, they want to talk about, oh, you know, well, you know, I don't got to go out to the highways and the hedges. I can just, you know, go here. You know, I could just go live right here. And, you know, we, we got to build Israelite communities and this and that. 
the men of the Lord through the spirit and power of your house, Bosh, Miyosh, are going to cut you with the scriptures that you claim to that you claim to be uh, so diligently following that you claim to really have faith in. And then it gets revealed that you really not a man, that you are just fucking weak and pathetic. And the spirit of the Lord is not dealing with you. Then when it comes time for the persecution, you're going to have many of these jakes, you know, you already got them uh, slandering the men of the Lord, but you're going to have them coming up against the men of the Lord even more because Yahweh Shah said the servant is not greater than his master. But the Lord's going to raise up that standard and there's going to be a lot of these jakes, every single one of these jakes, to lock it. all of the two thirds is going to be deleted one way or the other, man. Because the Lord's tired of this shit. It's nothing, it's nothing new under the sun. These niggas have been raising up evil reports. They've been uh, slothful servants. They've been lazy as fuck. They've been wanting to half-ass give you how about me on shot what he asked for, but go 125% for a fucking idol. Like Jake and that Islam bullshit. Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Masha, how long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have shewed them? I'll read that again for all the signs which I have shewed among them. Verse 12, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them. And will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. So right here, Jake always complaining about, oh, not always complaining, but I'm pretty sure a good thought in Jake's head is like, well, if the Lord's real. Why not see no miracles? Because, nigga, you've been here before. Everybody's been here before. Reincarnation is biblical. A lot of you niggas were the niggas back then talking shit, despite the fact the Lord been showed miracles. You niggas complained when he made quail and manna rain down from heaven. You niggas complained while you was eating it. And that's how you know. That the true biblical Hebrew Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Because only we do stupid shit like that. <laughs> and even Esau, as wicked and stupid as he is, even he knows when to shut his damn mouth. He'll wait until he's out of your presence to start talking shit. Now, you can't hide from the presence of Yahweh Bashmiel Shah anyway. But our people, they weren't just murmuring in their hearts. They were, they were verbally running their mouth talking shit. That's the audacity that a privileged, um, that a privileged, uh, what do you call that? A trust fund baby would have. And spiritually speaking, that's how people was acting like spiritual trust fund babies. We always got, you know, jokes about Esau, who's a trust fund baby, never had to work silver spoon in his mouth. But spiritually, that's what Jake was. We didn't appreciate the blessings we was getting. So that's why we kept fucking complaining. And like in what the Lord said right here, it reminds me of another thing where he says he's going to disinherit them. We have many precepts where the Lord says Israel is the lot of his inheritance. But like a, you know, like a father does when he gets tired with any rebellious child of his, like a, any rich, wealthy, mighty father that's a king would do. He said, I'm going to disinherit this little ungrateful nigga, man. Let's see what disinherit gets into. Strong's age 34, 23. And we have the Yah, the Ra, and the Shah. So Yarash. Outline the biblical uses to seize, dispossess, take possession off, inherit, disinherit, occupy, impoverish, be an heir, take possession of, inherit, impoverish, come to poverty, be poor, to be dispossessed, be impoverished, come to poverty, to devour, to come to possess, to inherit, to cause others to possess or inherit, to impoverish, to dispossess. To destroy, bring to ruin, disinherit. Whew, man. And Jake don't understand, man. Being an inheritance of the Lord is a blessing. He didn't have to choose you. He didn't have to choose any of us. So the least you can do is do what he tells you to do. And if you don't understand, inquire. Ask the Lord. That's what prayer is for. That's what studying the truth of approval is for. Not just throwing up the towel and saying, oh, let me just be a nigga. This is too hard. The Lord's going to fucking destroy you. So you either you either do what you need to do to be part of his inheritance, okay, or be disinherited and get treated like a fucking heathen. But two thirds of our people are already on heathen status. The Lord don't even want these niggas looking his way. That's why two thirds of these niggas will walk past and not inquire about the truth. That's why two thirds of these niggas will see the videos that the brothers put on on the YouTube algorithm 
scroll past it and watch some damn booty twerking videos or pocket watching one of these wicked ass jakes worrying about how much money some stupid ass uh athlete got signed for like that's gonna make like that's gonna change anything in your life but won't serve you how about sham yow shot and if you do it, you got to do it while complaining and bitching and moaning about what you can't do. Numbers chapter 14, verse 13. And Mashah said unto the Lord Yahweh, then the Egyptians shall hear it. For thou broughtest up this people and thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Lord Yahweh, art among this people. That thou, Lord Yahweh, art seen face to face and that thy cloud standeth over them and that thou goest before them by the daytime and a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak saying because the lord yahweh was not able to bring this people into the land which he swear unto them therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord Yahweh is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. That is what gets into reincarnation right there. Okay. Verse 19, pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. That what Moses did right there, that was loving the Lord as well as loving his people. That was keeping the two greatest commandments because he loved Yahweh Bashmi al Shai enough that he remembered these um these precepts that the Lord had gave him. That, that goes back to... um. <clears throat> one of the Ten Commandments. You got to really love the Lord and believe that he is going to do what he says he's going to do to remind him of that. That's what Masha did. And by doing that, he saved the congregation of Israel because the Lord was tired. The Lord was tired about bullshit. And he loved his neighbor as himself because he's like, all right, I'm not doing the wicked shit they doing. But putting myself in, in their shoes, you know. Forgive, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. If I was in their shoes, all stupid and ignorant, so caught up in the flesh, not realizing the Lord was about to destroy me, I would want for one of my brothers who the Lord is dealing with to um, make intercession on my behalf, you know, so I don't get completely destroyed. <clears throat> so Moses tried, you know, which is more than what these two third niggas is doing right now for the men of the Lord. They're doing the exact opposite. Number chapter 14, verse 20. Something says, the Lord, Yahweh pardons and rebukes. Verse 20. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, Yahweh, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Matazarium and the wilderness and have tempted me now these 10 times and have not hearkened to my voice. Let that resonate that our people are so fucking out of pocket. They tempted the Heavenly Father 10 times. One is crazy. Two is like, oh, uh, what, what, the, what the fuck? Three. 10 times. A perfect number of times our people tempted the Lord. Verse 23. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto the fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. That's fair. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Masha and unto Aharon, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, Yahshua Allah, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. 
your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward which have murmured against me doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which i swear to make you dwell therein save caleb the son of japune and yahweh the son of nun but your little ones which ye said should be a prey them will i bring in and they shall know the land which ye have despised but as for you your carcasses they shall fall in this wilderness and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord Yahweh, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall be consumed and there they shall die. And the men which Masha sent to search the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord Yahweh. But Yahweh the son of Nan, and Caleb, the son of Japune, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. <clears throat> that goes back into what I read in Acts, the 13th chapter, where it says the Lord suffered their manners in the wilderness. Meaning he dealt up with these. He dealt with these murmuring niggas and he had mercy on them. But that that 10, that 10th time, that perfect, that, that that number of perfection. He said, no, these niggas is dying. I'm starting over with a new generation. Because that goes back into one of these uh, beautiful Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And that's one thing that Jake don't understand. This is why you got to watch out what you say. Let alone... So like you got to watch out for wicked thoughts. You got to rebuke wicked thoughts, let alone the stuff that you say. This is why you got to really. This is why that first commandment is real. That uh, first of the two greatest commandments is real heavy. You got to rebuke wicked thoughts and realize that, look, this isn't this isn't according to the scripture. That's Satan whispering to me, sounding like me. Get get away from me, Satan. In the name of Yahweh Shai, get away from me. You got to really do this consistently. In your head. Because when you don't, you give those wicked thoughts and, uh, and evil suspicions the chance to fester. Then you start to feel that way. Then you start to speak it. And then the Lord is going to hold you to it because that's a faithless thing to do. So all that that shit that our people was talking about, how the Lord brought, it, brought them out of Egypt to make them father, to make their, their children fatherless and their wives widows. Nigga, that's faithless. And that like that's bearing false against the Lord, like the Lord. Like he's not about his namesake. He already performed miracles for you. Niggas was complaining. Delivered you out of Egypt. You didn't even think that was possible. Part of the Red Sea when you was complaining about Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's armies approaching. Just to name a few miracles. And the first thing you got to say, even as the Lord's telling you, look, I'm about to deliver these heathen into your hand. You talking about how the Lord is going to make your, 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 your people Come on now. So he said, OK, look, I want to I want to prove you wrong in two ways. I'm going to show you one. No, your wives, are, your children and your wives are going to be just fine. But nigga, you dying here. So, Lockie, let me make sure I'm reading that again. I don't want to butcher that. There we go. So, Lockie, it wasn't the wives. But yeah, the Lord said, okay, nah, y'all, y'all grown up niggas. Y'all was murmuring. All right. But your little ones are going to be fine because you said there's going to be a prey. You went against what I said. From the beginning, I intended to bring you all into the promised land. But since you want to be a smart ass, since you want to have no faith, since you want to go two ways, you want to be double minded. You, you can get exactly what you asked for. 
Death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So you're going to eat the fruit of the shit you said out your mouth. You get, to be, you, you get to be a carcass here in the wilderness. And your children are going to go into the promised land. But not you. And I'm going to make them wander in the wilderness. A year for each day that you was talking that shit. Numbers chapter 14, verse 34. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. All these niggas had to do was have faith in Yahweh Bash me all shy. So, a day, as the Lord says, a day, right here, he said, after the number of days which ye search the land, even for 40 days, each day for a year so they searched the land for 40 days but because these niggas was talking shit the children had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years and as our elders have said on multiple occasions you know similar to how what what happened what happened back then right now in this grace period the lord is getting egypt off of us by having us wander in this wilderness and choose his ways over the ways of the heathen because as you can see those that previous generation, they were still so caught up on Egypt. They kept complaining about going back to Egypt every time something got hard. So the Lord says, look, I'm not putting up with that no more. We don't need no damn rebels. Everybody's supposed to be on one accord. You don't need an army divided amongst itself. No, y'all can die. Because everything you speak in is death anyway. So go ahead. You're going to eat the fruit of that. But those that believe in the Lord and love him with all their heart and all their soul and all their mind, He's going to make sure that they live. Nothing's going to stop you, even if you have to be martyred for Yahweh Bashmiel Shah's namesake. And that's the important thing to take away from this epistle right here, because two thirds of our people, even in this time, they're back in the reincarnation. They didn't believe that they was going to get to the promised land out of Egypt back then. And they don't believe that, that there's anything other than this spiritual Egypt, Sodom and Egypt, Babylon, the great America right now. They don't believe that we're going to be, uh, gods on earth lowercase g on the hamashiach yahweh shah they don't believe that we're going to get the whole promised land back start that jerusalem our capital rebuilt they don't believe we're going to have the heathen as an inheritance so the lord's going to delete these niggas they show it by their actions those that don't even try to uh ser to seek out yahweh bash me shah those that know the truth okay those that have been in the truth but they changing up the doctrine okay those that ain't diligent the Lord sees that. And he's going to reward those that suffered for his namesake, despite the fact that there was many um, pleasing things to the flesh that they could have partook in. But they chose the fear of the Lord over those things, showing how much they love him. Let me see. I have not seen. I think it's in Isaiah. Yep, Isaiah as well as 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. Let me get that. And it reads, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O power, besides thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Right. Now let's get that once again in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And it reads, But as it is written, and I just pulled up where it was written in, in Isaiah 64 and 4. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, which is your mind, the things which the Most High Power, Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, have prepared for them that love him. The Lord is not Esau. Verse 10. But the Most High Power, Yahweh, hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of the most high power, Yahweh. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him? Even so, the things of the most high power, Yahweh, knoweth no man, but the spirit of the most high power, Yahweh. Right, and even though we haven't physically seen these things through faith and through Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, giving us the Rechak Wadas, the Holy Spirit, we have, we have the faith where we can, we have enough of a vision and an, enough of an idea, and we have the belief that these things are there, we can sense them, okay? We understand that, yeah, we've never seen um, a street paved with gold 
translucent gold and stuff like that, but we can see that through faith. We've never seen habit. We never seen ourselves having multiple heathen as our slaves, but we see that. We haven't seen Yahweh Shah come on that fathership, that that giant chariot, but we can see it through faith. But those that don't love the Lord, He's not going to put His Spirit in them, you know. And right here where it says, who knows the, the things of a man save the spirit of a man, which is in him. You know, it, one one example that can be used for that is like, OK, somebody who's been um, somebody who's a professional at a certain craft. OK, he understands what comes with that craft. So likewise, who can understand the things that the Lord has ready for those that he's dealing with, except those that he put that spirit in? That's another beauty of the Holy Spirit, the Rakhak Wadash. It's that earnest, that down payment that Yahweh Shah put down for the elect. And this is why we pray every single day that he keeps that spirit on us. Because if he takes it off of you, you weren't actually of the elect. Because there's many people that's been called into the truth to be destroyed. Okay. Well, I'll say it's a number of people that's been called into the truth to be, to be destroyed. But ultimately, the elect, <clears throat> the elect has a certain um, MO that they'll have. And ultimately, the main point is the Lord will keep the spirit of them to endure to the end that they might be saved. And I think it's another precept, uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4. And. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 14, and it reads, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Yahweh Shai shall raise us up also by Yahweh Shai and shall present us with you. Right. Because those of the of the hopeful elect, we understand that the Lord is capable of raising somebody from the dead effortlessly. And those of the elect will be raised up from the dead in these last days, if, even if they have to be martyred for the namesakes of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, just like the Heavenly Father Yahweh raised Yahweh Shai up for being um. For being that righteous sacrifice and being obedient, he will raise up those of us that have to be martyred for his namesake if we're obedient unto death like Yahweh was. Verse 15 For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of the Most High Power Yahweh. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day, all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Because these physical bodies are being destroyed day by day with this false food here, chemtrails, so forth and so on, being uh, worked to the bone at the plantation, so forth and so on, and just everything else that vexes our spirit, which also breaks us down. Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, via the Rakhak Wadash, he renews us day by day. We read these scriptures, we apply these scriptures, we see the Lord doing these works in the earth, and the Lord revealing his presence to us in different ways, and that's enough to boost our faith we can endure through everything else we're going through. Verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for a, us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Right, because a day to the Lord, Yahweh, is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. So a thousand earthly years to us is a day for the Lord. And when you move with the Rakhak Wadash, once again, who knoweth the things of, of the Most High, but the spirit of the Most High. Okay, we understand this because the Lord has blessed us with his spirit where we understand just enough unto salvation. We understand the mentality we need to have to move towards salvation, to not faint and not get offended. And we understand we got to keep building upon that because at any given moment, if you slip up, you know, Satan will take away your opportunity at salvation. So you got to be diligent. Got to understand that this is light no matter how many earthly years pass. If it's nothing to the Lord, you got to look at it like, hey, it's nothing. The Lord put me in his flesh and made these days drag on to just, you know, so when you finally get the victory, you'll 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 be that much more grateful that the Lord was with you this entire way. Because like like uh, the brothers always say, if this you know, like elders always say, if this was easy, you know, everybody would be doing it. But to show you the Lord doesn't want everybody, he makes this walk difficult. It's much that brothers have to sacrifice that's pleasing to the flesh. And for those that don't have any hope of the kingdom, they will look at you like you're crazy for, for giving up many different women. You know, beautiful women throwing themselves at you, even though they got men. Even though they want to, they want to cheat on their men with you, throwing, you know, just like, no, I'm not doing. It. I'm choosing the Lord. Like this, this harlot can get the hell away from me. 
they look at you like you're crazy, but they don't understand what comes after. They don't understand. And this is like this is about to say right here in the verse. I'm getting ahead of myself. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18. While we look at the things which are seen. So like, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's the kingdom of heaven. OK, we can't tell you we can't physically see these things and write and, you know. Relate to you what we have seen it. No. We believe the report. We understand that these things are coming to those that fear you. How about and those that love him and keep his commandments? OK. <laughs> So that being the case, this is why the scripture says, let no man take thy crown. We can't sacrifice uh, eternity in the kingdom sitting at Yahweh Shai's table for a temporary fix in the flesh. Once you know better, you have to do better. If you committed adultery before you came to the truth, the Lord, he winked at that ignorance. But once you know better, you got to do better. Okay. If you committed, uh, you know, if you were stealing, robbing, whatever the case you might have been, deleting, you got to sincerely repent from those things and the Lord will deal with you in righteousness. But that's, you know, that's basically how it goes. And I wanted to get one last precept showing the importance of Yahweh Shah, because that's also, you know, the main purpose of why I like to do the spirit these Shabbat readings. I think it's I'm trying to remember how it's worded. Uh, this is one of them. This is the book of Second John, chapter one, verse. Let me see if I got it correct. Philakia. <clears throat> Second John chapter one, verse eight, and it reads, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, meaning the things we worked for, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai hath not the most high Yahweh. He that abideth in the doctrine of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai hath both the father and the son. Right. So that right there gets into how important it is to believe when Yahweh Shai. And that's one thing I wanted to keep in this, uh, the Shabbat readings is the importance of our Lord. Because just the Shabbat itself is a is a, um, a regulation that we can't keep in breaking the Shabbat is punishable by death. But Yahweh Shai, he's the Lord of the Sabbath. And through his grace, we're able to um, still draw breath and have a chance to serve in him despite not being able to keep the Shabbat perfectly. OK. So in all things, I want to make sure with these Shabbat readings, Yahweh Shai's importance is always, um, you know, it's always mentioned. OK, because none of us can even get to the Heavenly Father without Yahweh Shai. So if you abide in this doctrine of Yahweh Shai, all right, you have the Father. The Father is dealing with you. The Father is delighting in you. But you got to keep building on that. OK. Which also goes back into. John, chapter three. Verse 14, and this is read as so Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, and it reads, And as Masha lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Right, because our people, once again, tempting the Lord, the, the, the Hebrew Israelites, nobody else, the Hebrew Israelites, our people, they, t they were in the wilderness, they got bit by serpents, and they prayed for a solution, and the Heavenly Father told Masha to make a, a, a bronze serpent, and if anybody looked on it who got bitten by the snake, they would live. They wouldn't perish. So now this is spiritually being applied to Yahweh Shah, our true brass serpent. Verse 16. For whoso, so like for the most high power, Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Line upon line, precept upon precept. This is talking about the world of Israel. Because starting at verse 14, the context was talking about the children of Israel being bitten by the serpents in the wilderness. And Moses raising up that brass serpent that the Lord Yahweh commanded him to make. Which was always symbolic of Yahweh Shai. It wasn't to worship a brass serpent. It was symbolic of Yahweh Shai. Saving the nation of Israel and whoever believes on him. 
verse 17. For the most high power, Yahweh sent not his son into the world, the world of Israel, to condemn the world, but that the world of Israel through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. I mean, if you believe on Yahweh Shah, you're not condemned. There's things in the law of Moses that you couldn't be justified, justified in breaking under the first covenant standard, but we're not under the law of the first covenant. We're under the grace of Yahweh Shah. Okay, and that's ultimately the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's grace. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High Power, Yahweh. Right, because what's your sacrifice going to be? There's, you don't have a sacrifice greater than Yahweh Shah's blood. That was always the ultimate sacrifice that was able to give us a grace period, that was able to cover our sins, okay, if we're of the elect. The blood of bulls and goats was never able to do that. And I believe the, even the book of Hebrews, the 8th chapter, the ninth chapter gets into that and confirms that you, you Old Testament dudes are just through. And especially Sakari talking about the Levitical priesthood is going to be have Yahweh Shai pay tithes to them in the kingdom. This dumb crap. Let you know that niggas is just niggas, man. Only a nigga would think that because these niggas are so caught up on carnality and receiving money. They just say anything out their mouth. St. John chapter 3 verse 19. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. All this crap Jake does for filthy lucre's sake, changing up the doctrine, talking about they still a crip while being in the truth, all this dumb shit. Verse 20, everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Right, because Jake don't like being fucking corrected. But he that, that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in the most high power, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. Right. Those that actually want Yahweh shot, you know, those that actually seek Yahweh shot, they will take the rebuke. They'll do whatever they got to do, you know, and they'll they'll take what they got to take out in the open, you know, all to be accepted of, of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. They're not trying to uh, they're not moving with guile. OK. But that goes all into loving the Lord, Yahweh, thy power with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. That means you don't try to play the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, like he's. Like he's sweet, like he doesn't see the dumb shit that you do. When you mess up, don't try to justify yourself, not even in your heart, meaning your mind. You got to pray to the Lord that he forgives you and that he makes you to not go off. You know, you got to sincerely ask for these things. Don't be upset that the Lord has. Don't be terif so terrified in, in the wrong way that and upset that the Lord, he can put the spirit on you and take it off the next day. But fear the Lord and reverence him for that. Understand that all of his judgments are fair. And if you really don't want to be judged, just move, just pray that he gives you the spirit and the power to do righteously. It's like your righteousness unto the end. Okay, unto salvation. But that's all I have for this epistle. Hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Harachach, Wadash. Double honors as always to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere citations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of the sincere elders and Akim of Great Millstone that teach the likewise doctrine, truth, and sincerity, as well as the brothers on down that teach the likewise doctrine, truth, and sincerity, the speckled bird, Hebrew is like foreigners scattered among the heathen that are like the heathen, and the sincere Akwathium of the nation of Israel, which is to say the sincere sisters of the nation of Israel, listen to silence and meekness as the scriptures command to do so. As well as the uh, as well as the brothers who are believers, and it is not their lot uh, to be teachers, but truly believe in the Lord. As the scriptures also give us accounts of the, uh, those brothers that were helps of the prophets. Kwam Yasharala and Ababa Ball. We almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah. We got next. Adawan Ratazah. Shemai Yasha Allah Yahawa Alahainawa Yahawa Achad Wa Yahawa Bahasham Yahweh Shai Baba Kusha Baba Kusha Baba Kusha. Shalach Rayam, Wa Ainashim, Wa Haragim, Wa Ashim, Wa Abadim, Wa Mashapatim, all call Adawamim, Wa Gawayim, Wa Ayabim Nawa, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, Wa Babal. I tha, I tha, I tha, I tha, Thawada, Thamyad, Tawab, Aman. Shabbat Shalawan.